Mm-hmm. Hey, Brother Roy here, Old School Bible Baptist Ministries. Amen. Hey, uh, we're coming to you today from uh, the Ambassador Hotel, 100 year old hotel in downtown uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, I'm going to be uh, the speaker at the uh, National Day of Prayer, uh, Governor's Prayer Bro- Breakfast at the Wisconsin Club uh, in the morning. So uh, just here in- enjoying my hotel room. And I was looking on my phone and I got some news from back home. You know, I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada, and uh, Bible Baptist Church, Las Vegas, Nevada. And I got some news <laughs> from Las Vegas, Nevada that was uh, was shocking, and it got me thinking. And the uh, Lord put some stuff on my heart. Just want to share with you real quick this morning. Um, yesterday, in Las Vegas, Nevada, downtown, a guy killed somebody and ate some of his face off. Yeah, this is true. Las Vegas News yesterday. Guy killed somebody and ate some of his face. Uh, that's crazy. That's beyond just wicked. Uh, uh, that's devilish, if you know what I'm saying. So um, let's pray real quick, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for our salvation. We thank you for the blood that was shed. We thank you, Lord, for your precious word. And God, we just ask now in these next few minutes that we get some light from your word on what's going on in this crazy world right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, so, um, you know, I'm I'm from Vegas. I live in Vegas. Any of y'all that have been watching this channel, uh, you know, we preach on Fremont Street. We do street ministry in Vegas. And... They don't call it Sin City for nothing. Las Vegas is inundated with the bedeviled homeless. The bedeviled homeless. Now, you can use the word demonic. I I understand the word difference between demon and devil. Demon isn't in the King James Bible. They're called devils. Um, But just for the simplicity of language, uh, once terms are defined, it's okay to use it in the English language. You can say the demonic, you can say the devilish, as long as we understand what we're talking about. And uh, these these devils, these uh, this activity. Um, now these these hordes of the homeless that you see in Las Vegas, and I see on TV and stuff uh, in most ma- in major cities. Uh, they're they're just the the demonic activity, the devilish activity is drawn. To these population centers uh, for some reason. And um, they're not just crazy. Uh, you see them out there with the strange bodily movements and yelling and, and talking and nobody's there. Uh, uh, there oh, there's somebody there. You don't see them, but they're in, they're in communication with them. Uh, this is the bedeviled. This is a rise in the supernatural arise in demonic activity that you didn't see uh when i was younger but it's it's and it's increasing everywhere and so what's going on what's going on here well you know when when the lord came the first time when the lord jesus christ when he came he was born in that lowly manger in Bethlehem. God manifest in the flesh. Messiah of Israel, the promised king, he came. Um, it wasn't a secret to the forces of the enemy, to Satan and his devils. It was not a secret that he was coming. Um and that is why when you read in the Gospels, you see what was literally a pandemic of supernatural, devilish, or demonic activity. Um, when you read in your Old Testament, you don't see the proliferation and the common occurrence of anybody 
casting out devils, casting out unclean spirit, people possessed of devils, people de- are uh, possessed of unclean spirits. You don't really see that in the Old Testament. Very, very, very slight, very seldom. But when you get to the time of Christ, it's off the hook. It's everywhere. The devil knew what time it was. The devil knew what time it was. And he does know what time it is. Now look look at uh, Matthew chapter 8 and 29. Chapter 8, verse 29. The Lord is dealing with the demoniac of the Gadarenes, the man that was in the tombs, the man that, that cut himself, that could break chains, right? The, the one who had a legion of devils in him. But we come there in 8 and 29, and Jesus is going to cast cast these devils out of this out of this possessed man and that here's what the devils say and behold they cried out saying what have we to do with thee Jesus thou son of god art thou come hither to torment us before the time devils know what time it was that's why all this activity is going on the demonic activity, the devilish activity in the time of Christ in the Gospels, because they know what time it was. They know what time it was. They knew when he was supposed to come. They knew it was the time. They knew mis- that, that what was going on. And so the, here is an uptake. And before the first advent, during the first advent, you see an uptake of this type of activity. Um, now look in uh, Revelations 12.12. 12. Revelation 12.12 12 says this, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because, what? He knoweth that he hath but a short time. Devil knows what time it is. Devil knows what time it is. Right here, this is this is during the tribulation. He knows his time's just about up. He's got great wrath. He comes down, he comes down. And, and, and what is there? This is right before the second advent when Christ returns. This is the tribulation. So what do we see before the second advent? We see an uptick in this devilish or demonic activity. Um, look at uh, Revelation 9.13. Are oh, you right there? Revelation 9.13. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, uh, which is before God, saying to the six angels, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels that are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for, what? A time, an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. And uh, then, oh, where was that? Revelation. Oh, I'm sorry. Then go back to verse verses one through three. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven under the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit, and there came out of the of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. At and a great increase, a great uptick. The devils just let loose. Look at uh, uh, Revelation 16, verse 12. And the sixth angel poured his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth of the false prophet. And they are the spirits of devils 
working miracles which go forth into unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. So we saw the same thing building up at Christ's first advent. And then we see it even is wilder and crazier at the end before his second advent. And I think that is what we're seeing in the world today. When I was a young man, you didn't you didn't see, you know, if you saw one crazy person somewhere, that was like, oh wow. And hey man, somebody get him some help and the hospital they'd take him to the hospital, the police would get him, or something like that. Not anymore. Hordes of them. So every streets just fill with them. You go through intersection, there's one on every corner. <laughs> just talk. They're crazy. That's, the devil knows what time it is. The devil knows that the Lord is soon to come. So they arrested this guy that ate off part of the guy's face that he killed downtown Las Vegas. And you know what he told the police? Something was possessing me. Something was possessing me. <laughs> hey. He spoke the truth. He spoke the truth. And you know what? It's going to get worse before it gets better. And you see, you see them on the street corners. You see them downtown. They're just, they're, they're, they're gone. And, and they're yelling and they're talking and there's weird voices coming out of them. This is more than simple medical mental illness. This is the devilish. This is the demonic. These are the spirits. Talk about Satan, the god of this world. He's the prince of the power of the air. Huh? He is the prince over the children of disobedience, that spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And it's why is all this happening? Why? Well, because the, the devil knows what time it is. He knows his time is short. And just like at the first advent, this stuff is increasing now before the second advent. So let me, let me leave you with this. Luke chapter 21. Give you a spiritual application here. I understand this is a tribulation uh, verse, but look at Luke chapter 21 and verse 21. 28. Verse 27. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Oh, he's coming soon. He's coming soon. The signs are all around you. Hey, you know, he, Jesus said you'd know the sign. You will know the day and the hour. You know the sign. You know the season. You know when it's coming, huh? 28. And when these things begin, begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, don't be surprised. As we say, don't be surprised. These are the end times. Don't be surprised. People aren't interested in the Bible. They're not interested in the gospel. They're not getting saved like they used to. The churches aren't full like they used to be. Look, it was always going to be like that in the end times. It was going to be a great falling away. Uh, iniquity was going to increase. Uh, but there still, still is that remnant that, that God's coming for. There is his body, the church, that he's coming to call out of here very soon. So don't be discouraged. Um, and uh, listen, you you have when you're deal, dealing with devils, uh, the don't get caught up in that deliverance ministry, casting out devils nonsense. Uh, what what good is that? Cast cast out devils. Uh, no, what what casts out devils is 
the gospel. The gospel. Well, those people don't need devils cast out of them. They need to be saved. And as you see with the, the demoniac of the Gadarenes, who was possessed by an entire legion of devils, he came running and fell at Jesus' feet. And that goes to show you that a whole legion of devils can't keep you from coming to Jesus if you want to be saved. You want to deliver somebody from the devil or devils in them? Well, we need a new resident in the house. When somebody receives the Lord Jesus Christ in the person of his Holy Spirit, when a person is born again, <laughs> that's it for the devils. They got to go. So that's, that's how somebody gets delivered from devils. It's not a bunch of uh, 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 new apostolic reformation, uh, hoodoo, voodoo, show stu stuff. What's the, what's, the, what's the point? Oh, we're going to cast the demons out of this person. All right, well, hey, he's still going to hell. The demons will move, move right back in. The only way to move the demons out is to move Jesus in. Somebody receives trust, believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, and gets saved. That takes care of the demons in them. And, uh, but uh, again, there's a wide road and a narrow road, and the wide road, many are going down. They don't want Jesus. They're not interested. And, but there is that straight as a gate, narrow is a way that leadeth to et everlasting, eternal life. And few there be that find it. Listen, we're, we're not in the great harvest right now. Where we're at right now is the gleanings, just the end of the harvest. That's where you're just going to the corners of the field. You're just finding a couple here, just finding a couple there. But it was always going to be like that at the end. So, again, hey, when you see all these things come to pass, look up. Your redemption draweth nigh. Amen. Pray for me as uh, uh, I continue this preaching trip and uh, preach in a couple more churches here in Wisconsin and then fly down to uh, uh the NTEB, now the end begins, uh, camp meeting with Brother Joffrey Greider down there in St. Augustine, Florida, uh, the 17th through the 19th. And uh, then, then I fly back, then I fly back to Vegas and hopefully won't get my face ate off. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, God bless you. You know, I love you. We'll see you in the next one.